everybody welcome to another edition of the new era podcast i'm your co-host m2 dave and i'm here with my co-hosts tom brady as well as burrito war warhees aka king jr uh say hi guys hey what's up everyone what up what up so let's begin uh, if we may to talk about the one and only arson ash obviously the best tech seven player right there with me of course um he made a certain tweet uh about tech and eight and we'll kind of transition that to the general you know about the general state of the of current of, of a modern fight you know of a modern fighting game uh he says tekken 8 be like heat burst heat smash power crushes heat engages throws that's it seriously why do they even bother giving each character a variety of moves i think the insinuation is that the game is too offensive and that it's easier to play than i guess than usual um well let's start with king jr i mean you just got the game i know you're not a long-term tekken player do you feel like it's easy for you or do you do you feel like there's there's scrubbiness involved or how you know it's i think these tweets are like sometimes hard to analyze because you really don't know what he means i have a couple of ideas what he means but let's just have people comment on uh king jr go ahead and then we'll have tom brady after every tekken game before uh tekken 8 i just was a button masher like i just play it casually for fun with my friends but um I mean, I could see, like, um, I guess, like, the how strong they are in some cases. Like, um, I use King, so his uh, Heat Smash or whatever that crap's called, where you, like, glow silver. Um, like, he just uh, does, like, a sledgehammer fist, I think. And, like, it's, I think it's tracking, and if it lands, it's, like, half, or not, sorry, not half, but, like, a quarter of your life, maybe, or something. And right, yeah. uh, if it gets blocked, I think it, he goes into the Jaguar stance 50 50. Like, so I, I could see, like, I haven't seen everybody's and all that. I haven't seen the whole roster's attacks, but um, I could see, like, where he's coming from as far as how strong they are and possibly being, uh, making, like, newer players easier to compete with the, um, people that have been competing for a while. Like, that's, that's kind of how I felt about MK11, honestly. But, obviously, MK11 is a way worse uh, situation than Tekken, I think, in my opinion. Now, what do you say? I don't think he's saying it's scrub-friendly or whatever, or what I, I think, he, or even too aggressive to say. The, the, I think what he's trying to say is that they have upped – the situations where offense is very powerful while also scaling back certain things. I mean, just looking at Tekken, coming from Tekken 6, where the sidestep and the backdash collectively were... I mean, before 6, I think the best sidestep was pretty much 4 than 5. Um, but even T6 was... You know, I remember it helped me and JDCR was staying with us at the House of Goons. It helped me. It was like, even when you get hit, just keep sidestepping, whatever. Uh, but you know, obviously they've they've upped the offense to kind of deal with backdashing, how good the step was, etc. But simultaneously, like I know in T seven, I had never played it really, but one time, and I noticed the step was significantly worse than T six. And in this game, while the step is a little better than seven, the backdash is worse than seven. So, really, I feel like they have upped the situations where offense is prevalent and also upped players' options um, and, uh, you know, offensively. And then Heat obviously really kind of like opens things up, you know, where you just have to, people just become like a final boss character. But at the same time, they've scaled back. I don't, I don't care. I, someone will say, hey, they buffed step a little. They did. I, they buffed certain things from 7 to 8 and they nerfed certain things defensively from 7 to 8. But overall, I think backdash and step should probably be significantly better than it is. 
and heat should pro stuff should probably be a little worse than it is and there's a balance somewhere in there so i think that's what he's trying to say that it's pretty much the best way to win is to do is based around heat you know get in the heat quickly put your mix up on somebody because it, it can be a round ender just catching somebody the right way so i don't i don't really think that he's was, was trying to say like that's all the game is per se I just think he was saying that the game revolves around that. And obviously it's a new mechanic. And really, I know that there are some people that are going to have a counterpoint to this, but, you know, I'm old. So for me, Tekken was always overseas for, I think, Tekken 5 might be the only time I've seen it come to console, uh, came to console very quickly. Uh, and I know there was some type of, you know, uh, a problem with arcade owners and the deal they had with Namco because of how quick it came to console. But for the most part, Tekken has always been out at least a year or longer in arcades before it got a console launch, outside of, I think, 5.0. Uh, but then I think like DR and whatnot were in the arcades for a while before we got it on console. So overall, Tekken has gone through a lot of balance testing uh, outside of the USA and definitely outside of the console uh, for quite a while before normally it gets ported to home. And at that point, the game is usually a significantly more polished product as far as the offensive options versus the defensive options. However, this game became straight to console. Now, what Namco is doing, I agree with, uh, because they do what I call, so in business, or in sales, for example, you're going to sell, a, you know, say you have an appointment to sell a major product with such to someone or a company, and you're meeting them. If you show up and you dress up, and they're all dressed up, you can stay dressed up. If they are dressed down or start to dress, you know, take their jacket off or whatever, you can loosen your tie, take your jacket off, etc. What you can't do is show up casually, and they're all dressed up, and then you put on suit and tie. So what Tekken is doing is they start out dressed up and throw all the power in and all the over-the-top stuff because they realize it's much easier to dress down than to release a game with nothing, like Mortal Kombat, for example, and then just wait and see. Like if Tekken was re released with nothing and you guys had to wait for anything to come, the state of the game would be significantly worse than it is right now when they released with extreme power and now people are like, well, when are they going to, I mean, are they going to scale this back? Or are they going to look at this? Or are they going to look at that? So they're doing what they've always done. Launch with several extremes. Then over the course of time, scale those things down. And usually by that point, the game is coming to console. At this point, because the game launched like that, they're still using the same formula. But I do agree with launch with all the power and over the top stuff, you know, in the world and then begin to scale it back. Uh, and I think that, you know, I kind of agree with that formula. I know it's, it's you know, obviously the, the power they give these days is more offensive than anything else, and that is very annoying for those who, who, who don't like being funneled into that style. But I do like the idea of launching with extreme power and then over time finding out where the right balance is. Um, I think you're right, because you've said a lot out there that uh, many people will not know what you're talking about, because they've probably never played Tekken to that extent, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You started playing Tekken earlier than I did, but I, I think I played more games than you did, at least at a somewhere semi-competitive yeah, level. I didn't really play 5, and no, I just, yeah. four, I know you and, 4 and 6, games. 4 and 6. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Um, I can tell you right now, and uh, I don't think I'm being biased, this game is still at its core Tekken. And there are certain people on, on Twitter who are like going crazy for absolutely no reason, uh, saying, you know, uh, that, you know, uh, a player who doesn't know what he's doing will beat a high level player. It's just nonsense. It will never happen, right? It doesn't even happen in any other fighting game. Why would it happen in this game? So people like, I understand it's dramatics and I don't know, maybe some people are trolling, but I assure you that at the at the, at its core this game is still Tekken. And there's nobody winning because all of a sudden they're using a character to putting you, you know, in a fifty fifty mix up while in heat. If you watch the game and if people are good, 
it's still Tekken is still about movement. You need to know how to punish. You need to know how to whiff punish. You need to know how to break throws. Um, you know, you need to know matchups. So I think people are being a little bit too dramatic. Uh, I think the game has issues. In my humble opinion, it's mostly like the stuff that they should have fixed or, you know, that should have been available literally day one. Like, the, you know, they were not puni punishing pluggers, you know, rage quitters properly. I think to me, that's a far, far bigger issue than some of these other dramatics that people are you know, engaging on Twitter. Um, ironically, it's something that MK1 did get right. <laughs> Maybe one of the few things that, you know, at least they're punishing the pluggers properly. Uh, but uh, let me also transition, because you guys talked about fighting games in general, so I don't think this is necessarily about Tekken 8. So Punk says, this is a tweet from a couple of days ago. I quote, fighting games nowadays have been taken away from unique play styles, and that kind of sucks. It was nice seeing different play styles rather than it be lame, aggressive, neutral, base, etc. Now they're just starting to make everyone play rushdown style, which I don't think suits everyone. Uh, I mean, there's no question that this is true. Uh, I think maybe it's slightly exaggerated. Um, There's a follow-up to that also that says that developers are, what they have been doing is making games more aggressive because they believe that more offense is more hype and makes the game easier for people to get into. Uh, and that anytime there's any type of specialty character, lame, zoning, grappler, some type of a weirdo character, the average player will complain until those characters are nerfed into the Stone Age. I think those two tweets go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I like that. Nerfed into the Stone Age, that's kind of funny. But, I mean, you guys, if you've been around in this community for a long time, you know how I prefer to play and how I got my top eight at EVO. And uh, some people will always call me biased, that's fine. Look, I don't mind the game playing more aggressive. I played MKX, and one of the you know, one of the most fun that I, I've ever had locally, you know, playing the game casually, etc., was with Tremor. I love the character, and I, and I love the way he played. So I understand why games have to be more aggressive, because you can't have a game, you know, when, you know, you can't have a game that, you know, you have one character who's just zoning you across the screen, you know. It's just, it's just not going to sell. It's not... It's not pretty to look at, so you kind of have to balance that aspect properly. Uh, but I would, I would 100% agree with Punk that you know the games definitely have been, not all, but most of them, have, like even Street Fighter Six, you know, is more aggressive uh, than some of its, some of the prior versions, you know, of the franchise. Um, King Junior, what say you about this topic? I kind of agree with it, like. I mean, since MKX, we've had mostly rushdown characters. Um, Street Fighter, I can tell they were like, they like kind of toned down offense in general, but also most of it is rushdown characters. Um, Tekken, I haven't played much of, and I don't know all the rosters, but I'd imagine most of it is rushdown. I think that's probably normal for Tekken. But it is see, uh, it's like very easy to see in some fighting games, and I think it's kind of sad that uh, archetypes are kind of just fading away. It seems like. And what what do you think? Um, has this issue been exaggerated, or do you think it's hundred percent true? Um, I, I think it's hundred percent true, and there's a couple of talking points here that that really kind of resonate. For one, I just want people to realize. I think the tech community is finally realizing this. The interest of the developer and the interest of the top player are not necessarily aligned. The developer is going to use a formula that everyone who creates a product does. As things evolve over time, they want to make the product more accessible so it sells more. That's any product on the face of the planet. Well, fighting games follow that suit. The problem is fighting games are competitive. So while the, the developer wants to make things a little more accessible and more quote unquote hype, offense is the easiest thing to do and grasp in a fighting game, period. It is the easiest thing. It is why, it is why so many people prefer an offensive style, especially a new fighting game player. 
and and why they don't like specialty characters because what happens is most average players they pick their character they go into practice mode they learn their combos right what they don't do is say i don't want to learn my combos give let me see if there's a projectile i can spam from full screen right 99.9% .9 of people don't think that way at all so if they go online and face someone who's just throwing them all day or running away from them or trapping them or zoning them or whatever kind of weirdo shit people will do. They're like, well, I came online to fight and do these combos and I'm having to get through this and that. they don't like it because that's how most people think. Number one complaint with MK11, oh, the combos weren't good enough. Everything else that goes along with the strategy of the game, everything didn't matter to them. It was the combos. And that is, I think uh where developers are going they they realize that you know offense is hype early on they also realize that it's the easiest thing to do and that more so than trying to make it more accessible they're trying to phase out anyone who would even play that style so it's not even relevant anymore like you're not going to see somebody on the main stage doing that and someone says oh my god that looks terrible that looks like i wouldn't want to deal with that so I think they're just phasing that kind of stuff out because again, they just want more people to get into it. And they, they look for what I call honeymoon sales, right? During the honeymoon period of the game, the game looks hype, it looks aggressive, people wanna buy it. Oh my God, this is hype, hype, hype. And of course the top player, they're not in business to sell more games like the developer, they're in business to travel to, compete in and win tournaments. So the two are, as far as the, Top player goes, they want the game to be as least accessible as possible because they want to be able to mow down the average player easily uh, as, as opposed to kind of giving the average player ways to bridge the gap and still be able to compete way beyond their level. But developers are worried that if they do that, the product won't sell as well. And there's a direct correlation to that. Guilty Gear is normally seen as a very complex game. The very first time they significantly, quote unquote, dumb the game down, it's never sold so well ever. Uh, this is probably one of the more dumbed down Tekken games, even though it is still Tekken and there's still a lot to learn in it. There's still a lot to it. And look at the sales. This game will probably, it's already speed wise selling faster than any Tekken game ever has and will probably outsell every Tekken game. So there is a direct correlation to really pumping up the offense while not doing much with the defense and the game selling more. So the interest of the developer is not necessarily aligned with the interest of the tournament player. And then there's a thing, you know, offense sells very early. And to Ars Nash, I believe his direct quote was, is that all there is? Well, and I've always said this to Dave, and I've said it many times on stream and on YouTube videos, that once the game goes heavy offense, if that pretty much, the, the offensive mechanics are so strong that the game revolves around that, then after several months, people start saying, well, is that all there is? And I think you need the defensive mechanics to be equally as strong to get a really good count, cat and mouse game, a really good uh, 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 game between you know offensive mechanics, defensive mechanics, so then you get offensive players, defensive pl players. Then of course, obviously I like, the characters that are like weirdo characters, Ling would be what I would consider a weirdo character, things like that. Now, obviously, there's a few things about her that are a little too extreme in this game, but overall, the, Eddie used to be a weirdo character. Uh, I'm not really sure how he's going to be now, but overall, whenever these types of characters, zoners, lame style, not just in Tekken, but any fighting game, oh, this is a zoner, this is a grappler, people tend to these days complain about it and cry about it, and they get nerfed into the Stone Age. People, most people are aggressive players. So the way fighting games are today, that's going to favor 99% of people. And there are people that, that's just kind of not like how they play. Now, the MK community is one that's still kind of in the Stone Age with their train of thought, where they're like, well, if this person can do it and that person can do it, why can't this person do it? Sounds like excuses to me. Not everybody plays the same way. Even offensively, not everyone plays the same way. A good example would be maybe some, uh, the way Dave played an X, the way I played an X. You know, I used Ice Clone and I used it offensively. But if I couldn't be as aggressive and successful with something else, they would say, 
clone must be broke if this idiot can do it and he can't do it with anybody anybody else. People ostracize or, or, or they, they they really demonize, I should say the better word, they demonize people who win with a specific play style, be it weirdo, zoning, grappling, whatever, because why can't they do it with anyone else, right? Well, all they want to do is throw me all day or zone me all day or lame me out or trap me in the corner all day. Why? And people kind of demonized anything that's not kind of like the generic style. Uh, so I really do feel like this is something that has kind of been taboo to say. Like until now you see guys like Punk saying it and Flux saying it and, and, and Arslan Ash saying it. I really think, especially in the NRS scene, it is this this type of talking point has always been seen as conspiracy talk, not true. If this guy can do it, this, that guy can do it. They're just not good, no skill. All you want to do is run away or do this or that. People have individual strengths and skill set, and Punk is saying that gone are the days when people's individual strengths to their skill set where that style is allowed in these games, that you can still play those games in that style if that's your style. Now everyone's kind of funneled into offense, offense, offense. I feel like the Tekken community is finally getting their first taste of that. And uh, I think several other communities have been dealing with that for a while, but now it's kind of come over to Tekken as well. Definitely. I'm actually a little bit surprised about Arzen Ash's tweet. It's like, dude, where have you been? <laughs> have you ever played an NRS game in your, in your life? Have you have you ever played MKX? Uh, so I, I, I was a bit surprised to, to uh, see him tweet that. But on the other hand, sometimes high-level players do have agendas. I'm not saying that Arzen Ash does. But, you know, you saw men are already tweet that this was a while ago. We discussed this on the on the podcast as well. You know, Street Fighter Six was crappy. I mean, come on, like. So sometimes it's different to gauge. You know, like is this an actual uh, criticism of the game that a high level player has, or or is it just, you know, oh he just lost a tournament? Which in the, which in that one case, as the Jam po pointed out, he did lose a tournament. So he just made a salt tweet, and I think. Austin Nash was a, as a, a, at a Saudi Arabian tournament. He performed rather poorly. So I don't know if there's a correlation, but I, I can tell you this. Uh, the beauty of playing fighting games for a long time is that you have the facts. Like Tom said, he played Tekken 4 and he also played Tekken 6. So you have context, right? Let me tell you this. Back in the day, for Tekken, a lot, of, a lot of the times, but not always, some of the best characters in the game have always been very defensive. So you guys may, you know, see Leroy, ironically, because he was broken in Tekken 7, but in this game, he's generally considered not to be very strong. Neither is Steve, because they have counter hits, and they have strong, traditionally, you know, well, Leroy is a rather new character, but, you know, Steve has strong counter hits, so does Leroy, but... The damage on it, on it has been like severely reduced, right? And uh, it goes back to our dashboard. It's there for a reason. But traditionally, like tech, like exactly, you look at Tekken Four, Tekken Five, Steve. Tom, you know from Tekken Four, like Steve was incredibly defensive. I mean, it's so hard to approach and do anything. So I don't think that's what they want. And and we, you know, we got this new version of Tekken, which again, definitely is more offensive than ever before puts you in, in certain 50 50s more than ever before uh but I, again i do think there could be a better balance and i think eventually they will cut down and they will address it so uh, i'm not really too concerned what i am concerned about is a certain other game are they going to address stuff so i want to bring i also want to point out that none of the yeah, none of the good mortal Kombat players who went to tekken have ever once raised a concern about defensive mechanics in Mortal Kombat, and they never once made any of the observations of Arslan Ash and Tekken. I've never heard any well, any of them say, well, you know, you... it's too aggressive, it's too, or this <laughs> is all heat. They love it. They're like, oh, this is sick. You know, it's all set play and whatever, because they love it. That's what they live for. Well, I mean, when you played MKX, then... Like, I wouldn't describe this game MKX, but definitely, maybe it's the most MKX Tekken you'll ever My play in your life. My point is, you life. notice I mean, people I... who are playing other fighting games are like, well, it's, it's got to be scaled back a little bit. 
in NRS, if you say the same talking points, it's like, it's all you want to do is do this. Scrub, why don't you rush down? I come online to fight. That's kind of what you got to deal with. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. But let me, let's go back and talk about Mortal Kombat 1 for a second here. Um, so I, I did watch... Look, I'm not trying to hate on this game anymore. I think it's past due. And honestly, in my opinion, it makes the podcast boring. We've done it before. I still think that the game is okay. I don't think the game is bad. I think the game is has become stable, however. Um, and I think NRS has tried their best with the most recent cameos that they released. Chameleon, to a lesser extent, Tremor, and now Janet. They seem to be like they're more involved. If is that actually going to translate to, you know, unique, as Punk said, unique, you know, more specialized type of gameplay? I don't know. Uh, I I talked to uh, King Jr. privately, and we were like, man, I would buff this. I would really buff. I, I think the game is beyond buffs and nerfs at this point. I think the game, if you want to see, like, the tournament numbers go up, um... Uh, I think you have to do something else with the game. For those people who like it, God bless you. I'm not trying to ruin your game, but I think the game needs like a new feature. My personal suggestion, if I may say, and then you guys, I want you guys to comment, is you know you have, for example, a great idea that they came up with, like Cage's Star Power, but it's underutilized. It's not even that much of a factor for him. Wouldn't it be cool if every character had a Star Power that that is that would be unique? You know. To him or her not you know saying the same mechanic but you know let's say you have i don't know ice clone power and then when you uh, you know i'm sorry just ice power and then when when sub-zero has that active then maybe ice clone is better now and maybe one of your special moves is better now maybe now the slide can go under you know all projectiles in the first frame just something like that i think would be very very cool it would personally make make me play the game again again a lot i would watch a lot again i think it would be very very uh interesting it would be very very cool it would motivate me to play and honestly i would give nrs a million credit if they implemented something like that again something new to keep the game fresh to 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 take it out of this uh dimension of staleness that you know how many times you know have you guys seen rain play the same since the little, been playing the same for the past six months it's very boring to watch uh Again, just something unique that, you know, we can say, wow, this is actually different now. feels different. It's still MK1 if you like it, but there's an extra layer that, that makes people enjoy the game. Um, Franco, what say you? I'm not really sure. Like, I mean, they could try giving every character their own version of their, like, star power. I mean, I don't have, like, ideas for all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm always just vocal or sharing out my, like, uh, buffs and nerfs like I'm totally fine with getting buffs mostly maybe some very small nerfs here and there but like it's just only been nerfs these past couple patches and assuming they don't like reanimate or overhaul or redesign things which I'm not really sure if we're going to see anything like that uh, if we're only going to have buffs or nerfs uh, I would just like to see a lot more buffs like, I think a lot of the people can agree that, at least at a high level, ambushes are way better than summons. And it's, uh, I think it's been known for, like, since the game's release. And they clearly keep nerfing the ambush characters, for the most part, like, striker grenades. Um, Cameo Lao did get nerfed, but it's uh, that low hat. Um, but they should... Like, if they can see that ambushes are what make the game fun, instead of nerfing them, they should bring summons to their power. And I think there are, like, are ways that you can do that. Like, uh, Kung, uh, Kung Lao's uh, summon spin, before they took it away and said it was a bug, it used to launch on reversal or wake-up punish. And uh, that was, like, one thing that summons had over ambushes, was that you can exploit gaps and stuff with them. And I think more summons should have that kind of property. Like uh, Jax's purple punch, I was saying, like it should leave you in a dazed state or uh, wall bounce you for a full combo if you use it as a reversal counter punish. 
that's just like one very fast example off the top of my head. But um, I think that could, that's not really like an overhaul, but that's definitely like a huge like buff to add in for some ends. It just, uh, it get, adds more to the main mechanic of the game that they're currently mostly taking away from. Um, so as far as giving every character their own star power, though, I mean, it would be cool to see, like, Garrus has his clocks that lead to the Thanos snap. Raiden has the reduced chip damage after blocking five attacks. Johnny has uh, star power. So, yeah, something like that would be cool. I uh, don't know what you would do with every character, but I just want to see a lot of buffs. And uh, Ed Boon did hint at Shujinko getting some goodies. Uh, I guess not in the Janet Cage patch, but sometime in the future we may see some goodies for Shujinko. I just hope they're actual goodies and not like, oh, Conquest Kick is two frames safer on block now. Like, you know, some minor stuff that doesn't really matter. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Again, I want to stress this more so the case with Tom and less so, with, I guess, with the two of us. Is Every time people listen to the podcast, not necessarily a, a YouTube audience, I think they, they've been fair, but like other people, like, oh, yeah, they're just hating on the game. I'm telling you, if, if I see NRS put in the work, even if I disagree with the direction, I will give him credit. Like, if I see something unique... Again, that makes the game revitalized. It kind of puts new, breathes new life in the game. I will give him tons of props. I give him props for the last patch for MKX. I, I don't think it worked, but you can clearly tell they tried something new. They removed some of the overhead attacks. Um, they tried to alter the way breakers work and et cetera, et cetera, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. With the last, they obviously removed armor, which I disagree with, but there, there was an attempt to change the way the game was played. For the better or worse, depending how you look at it, right? I want to see something like this with this game, and I'll give him credit. Whether I disagree, whether I agree or, or disagree with the game is played, is, is, you know, is, is, a, is a different uh, topic. Tom, what say you? So look, I am going to crush this game right now, uh, and I hope everyone on Test Your Might knows that I'm going to crush this fucking game because all of you that are going to rip me on this podcast are the same people who talked about this game is six months. You know, it came out six months too early and don't really weigh in on too much until six months is over. Bad news, friends. Six months is over. So I'm going to give you the hard truth, my friends. And I hope you choke on it. This game was 18 months early, more than likely. And I really question how a company could sell you full price. The point is, this game is, like I said, it's more than likely 18 months early in release. And they sold it to you full price as the launch title. And even if they do fix everything, the day they do, the next game will be coming out the next day. So you literally will never get what they charged you for. That alone is not just hating. It's not hating on the game. And if you think that's hating on the game, that's like you going to a restaurant, you paying for it. They never give you what you pay for. The meal is terrible. It isn't what you ordered, et cetera. And then you complain about it and you're on, on the restaurant. It's people paid money for a product and they did not get what they received. You still have modes in the game that are quote unquote coming soon. Goodies quote unquote coming soon. When they say things are coming soon, that could be six months or longer. We have no idea what that even means. Coming soon is kind of a meme right now at this point. The fact of the matter is this. At the six month point right now, this game is absolutely abysmal. Uh, uh, the online, I should say. The online is, is abysmal. And I don't know. It's not fit for online tournament play. Uh, now, again, anyone that says the online isn't that bad, go play a game like Street Fighter or Tekken, even though Tekken's online is far from perfect. If you play that those two games every day for 60 days and not a single game of MK1, uh, uh, and then come back to MK1, you will notice just how bad the online is. The input delay online is terrible. There's just so much wrong with it that just makes it a frustrating experience even before you get to the gameplay. Just the online experience is not good. And for the netcode to be this bad, that just shows that they were a lot more than six months behind. Um, the cameos, the way the game plays 
is very similar to MK11. And people will say it's that much better. The vast majority of this game works like this. My turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn. So not everybody is using Striker, etc. right? So if you're not using Striker or maybe a Kano like Raiden or Goro, one of the assists that extends turn, you're playing my turn, your turn. You know, like if you play Liu Kang or uh, let's say the old Liu Kang Kung Lao meta, right? What would he do, right? Poke, poke, poke. And or he's, he's either going to finish the string or stagger. And then, of course, what are you going to do when he staggers? Down one or something like that. Well, he's going to block your down one and strike throw you right there. Or you're going to try to throw instead of down one and he's going to micro duck it and kill you. And that's the kind of, this game is very much like the my turn, your turn. I did this. Now it's your turn. And then and then I'm going to do this and you're going to poke to keep to get your turn back. And then, or I'm going to try to steal my turn by doing this. That's 90% of the game. Um, and there are some cameos that extend turns, but for the most part, if you look at characters like Raiden and Kenshi, the reason why they're so good is they defy that meta. Um, they have their own situation. Storm Cell itself is a very powerful move. It sucks you in. It does good chip damage. It breaks all wake up attacks. It does several things that it can anti-air in some instances. It does all these things well. Not saying that you use it as an anti-air, but if you happen to be doing it and someone's like holding up or whatever, that's still not going to work. So it stops so many of the common actions in the game. And then you throw in the assist on top of it. And then it really synergizes well because then he's going to extend turns and get his situations and... Just the nature of Storm Cell, where you want to flawless block it, you usually want to flawless block the hit before Storm Cell or the first hit of Storm Cell. Nobody wants to flawless block in the middle of Storm Cell. So now he's staggering and more staggers and more staggers and throws. And it just, it's a very complimentary style because the move is very powerful, it has many applications. Kenshi, when anyone says nerf Kenshi, that's a joke. Kenshi is probably the most original character in this game. Because he synergizes with himself. That's why he's so good. He is his own assist. He synergizes with himself and he can pick an assist to help him get to that situation. It's an ingenious way to look at an assist game. It's very, very good. But when I look at you know, how they've nerfed Striker, they've nerfed Kung Lao, they've nerfed Cyrex, they've nerfed Goro, no matter how many times they nerf these cameos, they're still the most commonly picked ones because people are still trying to play that Cyrex meta type of game. You know, even Raiden, he may use Kano or whatever to do that now, but he's still the same game plan. Same with Baraka or, or Scorpion or whatever. And that's because the other cameos are so garbage that even though NRS continues to nerf these cameos to force you to play the other ones, the other cameos are still so garbage that they go back to the old way to play because that's still the most effective way. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of work they have to do and, and, and really, and it also seems like they've, what they've really done is by nerfing all the cameos is it's almost like they're just, they want to discourage you from using the cameo. Kung Lao, more cooldown. Striker, more cooldown. Cyrex, more cooldown, right? Goro, more cooldown. It looks like they're just trying to discourage you from using your cameo. And it's a cameo game in which it feels like they're trying to, well, half of the cameos are, a cameo like Sector is only not that good because some of his moves like Homing Missile is too much of a resource cost, so you can't ever use it. So again, it just seems like there's always some type of a deterrent to use certain cameos or even the meta cameos. They're like, okay, well, we'll just make it so we're going to discourage you from using these cameos too often because there's this now extended cooldown. This is a cameo game. You would think they'd want cameos everywhere. And instead, they want to just limit how you can use the cameo or how often you're going to use it. And that is the feature of the game. So it, there's, it really makes no sense. It just feels like they still don't have any idea what they want to do with this system. The game has been out for six months and it's still in an extreme beta state. There's a, a there's also some buggy things with cameos, this party game garbage, like, uh, you know, uh, and this is several cameos that do this. 
Serena, she has her single dagger that comes back within two and a half seconds. But if you happen to use her regular dagger and then use her dagger, it's resource cost where it's going to have the extended cooldown of the multiple daggers. And I'm like, why is this? The properties didn't change. All of a sudden, the resource cost is higher for no reason. I, little weird things like that, that 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 make no sense why it's that way. Just It's just not fit to be a tournament game. And I think the tournament numbers reflect on that. And then there's the whole goodies tissue. Jinko and all this other garbage coming soon. Uh, what's coming soon? Online practice has been coming soon. Uh, Warrior Shrine has been coming soon. Last month, last month, when I weighed in about how, look, the tournament scene is already dying. So you really need crossplay because with online as garbage as it is, the only real way the online tournaments are really going to pick up is at least if you allow all the platforms to compete against each other. And NRS said it will be quote unquote coming soon. And I know all the people over on TYM and Twitter are like, hey, give them a break. They said coming soon. Well, it's a month later, there's not a word about crossplay in King of the Hill. I highly doubt they will ever do that. So I think for the life of the game, Xbox and PC players will never, will always be excluded from online tournaments. And that's quote unquote coming soon. We're still waiting on that. There is so much in this game that is in a deep, deep beta state, six months in. And if anyone says I'm hating on the game, we all paid for a full release product. And it's probably at least a year away from being finished right now. And they, but they to us as a finished product. That alone is not hating on the game. That's just saying, hey, this is very, very poor customer service, I guess. Uh, it's just, a, it's a very poor product. It's a bad product. Um, you might say MK1 might be a better fighting game than MK11, but MK11 is a better product than MK1, which I didn't think I'd ever say that. Uh, but there's there's just so there's just so much, there's just so well, me, much that that and let me say this: the cameos are the biggest issue. I mean, they really. I, I mean, look, I, I hate to say, it, man, they've got to take some of the. They've got to boost some of the special moves for some of these characters, and then they've got to steroid buff a lot of the cameos. I mean, th there's no other way to do it. I mean, I know people on TYM are going to be like, we don't want power, but MK community is kind of weird where, in general, I think, I know NRS is afraid of the complaining and the whining, et cetera, but this is kind of the world we live in today. And... I guess you have OGs from the past say, we didn't, nobody complained in our era. Well, that's because nobody complained because they knew nobody was listening and nobody could do shit about it anyway. The technology wasn't there to change anything. In the modern era, as long as people know somebody is listening and will change something based on public outcry, people will always try to use public outcry to sway things in their favor. So... Look, if a game get, is, is released with nothing, people are going to complain about it. We see with Tekken, if a game is released with tons of power, people are going to complain about it. The difference is when the game has power, people will at least continue to play it while they cry about it. When there is nothing, people will just stop playing it altogether. But either way, in the modern era where everybody has a voice, there is no possible way. This is a modern era where on social media, you have people who have never attended one day of medical school. They believe they knew more than a surgeon who actually went spent their whole life studying this. And they believe that their opinion should be heard in matters because they know just as good as an expert. That is the, even fighting games. Even the biggest casual believes his opinion is just as valid as an expert and they should be heard. And there's no way around this, no matter which way you go, there's no way to avoid the crying. NRS should put on their big boy pants and just say, we're going to give people what they need to have the game uh, compete. And even a bigger problem is, you know, what, what confuses me the most is the pro series. It was only thirty thousand dollars. Let, let me, okay, okay, go ahead. Tom, let, let, let me let me jump because I have to, uh, let's. I'm going to challenge you on a point here because I, I think this is where I I, I disagree with you, um, 
And here's what I mean. The the power level point that you tend to make and King Jr. to a lesser extent, Tetris Gamer don't know how strong something is. You have people, for example, right now crying in Tekken 8. Oh my God. Oh my God, Dragonov. Really? But 400,000 like, people didn't quit the game on the PS5 in the first correct. 30 days. Correct, correct. But hold on, let me okay, finish. Okay, well, please. that's my point. They'll uh, cry about it, but they'll keep playing it. No, no, yeah. No, that point is great. I agree with you. That, that's a great, that's that's a point I 100% agree with. But you play the older Tekka games. You know a lot of this crying is absolute nonsense, right? They're crying about a power level, but they have no idea. They don't, even Ars and Ash. You've been playing Tekken for longer than he freaking has, and, and you know for a fact that power levels used to be a lot, a, you know, massively stronger in the past, right? You had stuff like Tekken 5 Steve Infinite, right? It was course, so yeah. broken. T5 you Nina, even of course, dash, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't even dash up and do like a 1-2 because he could get behind your back and literally kill you for it. So a lot of this is just nonsense. In my humble opinion, let me tell you why the game is not a success from with the competitive audience obviously aside from the online stuff that we all agree with um uh, it's what you said earlier the game just doesn't have enough depth like to keep players mentally stimulated for a long time like players like johnny fox like a player like ninja killer right that's why those guys they 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 try new games they play tekken you know they play street Fighter. when was the last time you saw me play mk or even street fighter he doesn't have to because each character in Tekken has like 100 plus moves. There's always something to lab. There's always something to test. And most importantly, it goes beyond the meta that you just described. It's not a, oh, your turn. Oh, now it's my turn. Tekken's turn situations. is so hard. I know, it's situations. Yeah. Yes, that's, it's what fighting, that's what fighting games are supposed to be. Yes. Yeah, so that's the point. So how do we... I know NRS doesn't believe, apparently, in, in, in making their games deeper. I don't know why. But that's the number one thing. And that's the number one thing that they have to address. If they want those tournament numbers, which, again, they probably don't care. But if they want them to go up, that would be the number one thing to address. How do you make the games more... Uh, how do you make them deeper? How do you make them more mentally stimulating? And to, to abandon this, you know, like you, like you called it, like, you know... Your turn, oh, now my turn, oh, down one, and now it's throw, like... But it's, it's not, too... not at all that way, because someone's going to say, oh, well, this character here. They're not all that way. But, again, most of them are. Oh, yeah, but, exactly. And my point is, my you know, if I if I may finish, it, it's... That's the number one thing that they have to address. I don't think it's about power levels, because casual gamers, they don't know power levels. Even competitive players, they sometimes don't know the power levels, right? Because we're not really sure how strong... Okay, let me say it is. a different manner, then. Okay, right, go ahead. right now, the cameo system does more so of standardizing than synergizing. When a move is powerful, you can have multiple cameos synergize with it in different ways. Raiden is the perfect character in this game. He is the best example of how characters should be. Storm Cell is such a good move, right? And then you can say, do you want to use Kano? So the problem was Cyrex did everything all in one. Like, that was kind of the issue. So it's like, well, if you want consistent pressure, you would pick Kano. If you want, because he comes back so quickly, right? Because of his, 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 uh, his recharge, right? If you want the launcher still with pressure, you would go to Goro. But Goro comes back significantly slower, so you're not going to get those same opportunities as much as... So you don't get the launcher with Kano, but you get more consistent pressure opportunities. You don't get as much pressure opportunities with Goro, but you get the launcher from Storm Cell. And then people are starting to use Darius now where you can still make Storm Cell safe, if not advantage in certain instances. And then you can set up things like 50-50s on Wake Up where you have the heat Darius overhead will launch and Raiden has the low. And if you want to spend your entire bar uh, of Storm Cell, he can still launch you with doing the uh, spin kick. So a move that good and Raiden's overall kit allows him to synergize with multiple cameos that all do different things, although something similar as well. Uh, Kenshi, he could use Frost if he wanted to, but he goes with Sub-Zero because he also gains the projectile immunity. That's the only reason why he does it. Uh, because he could use you know, a cameo like Frost for it. But Kenshi synergizes with himself. So there are characters that synergize. 
Then there are other characters that standardize. When people always say, oh, oh Sub-Zero and, J and, 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 and uh, uh, Chameleon, that, that was a lifesaver for him. But by a lifesaver, all that did was standardize him. Now he can do full screen move into cameo and, you know, be safe and get combo opportunities. If it hits like slide into Katana, combo into special into Katana for more combos. Um, throw into Katana for combos. Okay, that's nice. Molina, he could do overhead or low into overhead, things like that, or double low into. So all they did was standardize him. So now you can do what a lot of these other characters. It's not a synergy, it's a standardize. It's like now you can do the same thing that everyone else outside of maybe two characters can do. I mean, Scorpion, what is this? Spear spin into striker. That is just saying now, Scorpion, you can, ten, you can also, you can do unsafe move into cameo and keep yourself safe. But it's not the same thing. You're just... These cameos standardize someone like Scorpion. They standardize someone like Baraka. Oh, Baraka, now you can do range move to bulldog your way in into striker or, you know, strings into uh, your blade spin or down one if they go to counter poke blade spin. Here comes striker and it's a combo. That's not a synergy. That's, oh, that's a standardized type of thing. And I feel like the majority of the cameos either do nothing or standardize very few synergize because the synergy is just as much on the cameo as it is the character. And I think NRS, they don't have to buff the power level, so to speak. I mean, I guess if they made it people more along the, the more in line with Raiden, but I, I don't necessarily mean to be as strong. What I mean is have it synergize so you do more than the same thing that every other character does for the most part. I think that's what I mean. Oh, well, that's fair enough. Uh, I guess my talking point before I let Franco comment on this uh, topic. Look, uh, I didn't play the beta uh, when it was first released because I usually don't play betas. I didn't even play Tekken 8. Uh, but, like, the game, if you listen to Justin Wong, because he played Marvel versus Capcom 1, which is, I, I guess, the most similar to this game that another game, you know, had, that another game can be contrasted to, you know, compared to. It was never going to be anything but this. Because, and this I think also goes along with the, with the death design. Uh, you talk about Cyrex, but to this day, the cameo system, people are trying to play it like Cyrex, right? Obviously, to uh, far, yeah, they're trying far... to replace him in the aggregate. But exactly at, at the end but of the it's... day, that that's why the game hasn't evolved that so much because that is still the most effective way to play those characters. The like, Cyrus just like Marvel's was Capcom 1, and I think you played the game. I really didn't. Maybe not a competitive league. Like, yeah. It was well, Colossum, right? Whatever. It was still about, okay, I'm going to get in using this one. Well, move, later on, it wasn't out. all Colossus because Colossus, I think, you only got three uses, so they moved on to another assist that had multiple ones, more than three. But, okay, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, Colossus yeah, early enough. on, it was all Colossus, yes. Yeah, so I'm not as educated about the game as you are, but the point is, this game is almost and this is kind of where nrs literally like machine gun some machine gun themselves in the foot because this game is always going to be that like which character allows me to get in for free while making my offense better and that's literally the whole game like that's the premise of the game right low hat that's why cage um has been strong and still you know was strong and i assume still his to this day it's like you know low hat Allows me to get in for, for free, improves my footsies, well, and allows me to start so does Goro, Shadow Shadowkick, Goro, whatever. Yeah, it, yeah it's essentially, but it's like all the same thing. Like, there's no, essentially, there's, the difference is super minor, and, and again, it bores me. Uh, and I don't think the game is ever going to get away from that. In order for them to get away from them, you would have cameos that buff, I don't know, your lane play, that buff your zoning, that buff your, uh, you know, like, a command grab character. I know Reiko has something similar, but most of the time, if you watch Rebound play, he actually uses Reiko more of like a semi zoning, rushed on top character. It's even hard to describe. Um, but, Franco, what do you think? You actually uh, kind of brought up my point I was going to throw in there. It was like um, a lot of these things we're doing are very similar, like with like aim, like the ambush cameos like doing unsafe move into ambush or full screen move into ambush and like cover yourself in that regard. But 
that's all like rush down aspects. A lot of the cameos in general are just like rush down based. Like I remember when Motaro was revealed and all that stuff, he was uh, advertised as like a defensive um, like cameo. But um, obviously on release, he was very weak and underpowered. One of the cameos and- in there, you know, they have the descriptions, their cameo card almost, right? One of them says, I think, sorry, fire damage. As if somehow that does more. Like, what is this, an ARPG? She does fire damage? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, even the, the descriptions don't make sense. I could go ahead yeah, and finish. Motaro, uh, Motaro's was, like, supposed to be defensive anti-zoning, I think. But he ended up being, like, one of the weakest cameos, if not the weakest, in my opinion, at that time. And then they buff him by making his tail shot, like, plus 13 on block, which... I'm all for those kind of buffs, but, like, it just isn't very fitting for the category he was, like, advertised as. Like, they just gave him a rushdown tool, essentially, instead of more defensive options, which I thought was strange. But, like, most of the cameos are mainly just doing rushdown things. Like, there's no cameos that are, like, again, this goes back to what I was saying about the Kung Lao spin. Like, there's no defensive, like, options, really, with the cameos. Like, I think... Like, I'll just say Sub-Zero, for example, Cameo Sub-Zero. He just has Ice Armor for projectile immunity, his Launcher Freeze, and his Cold Shoulder. All his Cold Shoulder does is knock you down. It's plus three on block, I think. That, that's all it does. Like, there's there's nothing about it. There's literally nothing else. It's just literally just a knockdown you're never going to use most of the time. Or a block string ender, like... You're almost always going to use the launcher or you're going to use the ice armor. So a lot of these cameos just have these like really weak moves you almost never see. Like you never see growth punch walk, telestomp, uh, Sector's homing missile, Cyrax's uh, bomb setup move. Um, you never even see Cyrax period really. <laughs> like so, but a lot and of them. All, are- all, all, almost all of Tremors moves aside from the ground pound yeah, yeah he literally has nine moves but you only see one of them well that, like, that's because again that goes back to the lack of depth and uh for example with tremor obviously i love tremor he was my main character in mkx but like which is kind of fitting because i use reiko and he's reiko's best cameo but the point is what do you really use tremor for you use him just to do one move everything else i assure you guys is a incredibly situational right the armor is way too slow uh sometimes you maybe you can pop it up and surprise your opponent uh but man oh man like what else are you, you essentially it's about command throw ambush ground pound right because that gives you the ability to do the most damage uh f- from your command throw and uh that's really it i mean again it's super lacking in depth yeah and like the right. to help yeah, out to give more suggestions on what they could do because I feel like that that kind of is more interesting to talk about than like what you said earlier about like maybe rehashing some old points or like I'm not trying to bash the game like you, you guys know that I always have hope for the game's future and that's why I throw out my feedback on Twitter and all that stuff but like I think what they could do besides making more summons have that pre-patch Kung Lao spin aspect is like just make some cameos literally like straight up different archetypes like instead of always making a character like a cameo's design based off rushdown like have a let's just say for example like strictly a zoning cameo that like uh mostly maybe like you know how kano has throwing knives as an ambush and kano ball as an ambush maybe they have similar attacks that are ambush and like you can throw their projectiles on top of like a primary character like Quan Chi's projectiles and maybe you'll actually see less of the one dimensional hyper rush down that we see in the current meta and I'm not saying let's make this a zoning meta but I'm just saying there would be more flavor and archetypes in the cameos and the primary characters and it'll just be less like one-dimensional with how you play the game and like throwing some defensive cameos in there like maybe you have a cameo that buffs your health or you take less damage or something or 
maybe they have an attack that uh, has adds block pressure or something, keeps you blocking or takes like a lot of chip damage, like De- Venomous Devora style or something, like just different ways of, you know, designing the cameos. Like I think uh, summons, I think too, like another idea I had was summons should be able to amplify some of their moves to have like newer properties. Like maybe you can amplify their move for the other half of the cameo bar and it becomes like an ambush or something like Serena throws two knives instead, but you are released from the summon stance after she throws her second knife or something. And it'll have like a faster recharge rate. So you're not just stuck on cameo cooldown after using both bars, but like, I think there's a lot of things they could do. It's just, it would take a lot of work, but like I said, if you're not talking about overhauling or redesigning, uh, and you're just mainly working with what's currently in the game, like they threw in Darius's new overhead kick. It's a reused asset essentially because it's just the second part of the overhead flip kick move. But, um, I mean, I think it's possible that you could just do stuff like that if you don't want to redesign or overhaul characters. Like, just use what you have and just change up the properties a lot. Yeah, I know, like, obviously, uh, animating new moves costs a lot of money. You know, and it's not just NRS, it's even even Tekken, you know, because they like to reuse animation. So it's understandable. A lot of the stuff, for example, the Lars does, it's reused animations, you know, from what he used to have, just, you know assigned to different move lists or you know has different properties so that that's i don't think that's an s thing but i've never seen uh again all to go back to original topic i think all games are more offensive but i've never seen a company as soon as you mentioned uh archetypes and, and gameplay styles i mean oh my god i think tom is right but he's blowing up for the wrong thing they literally run for the hills i'm sure as if there's any chance that NRS developers listen to this topic. I'm sure as soon as Franco said zoning, they probably just ran for the hills. Like, no, no, cannot have that. Whoa, zoning, cannot have that. Don't say that word. Like, they probably run for the hills, and it's probably, you know, out one ear, you know, in one ear, out the other, as the expression goes. So these guys have never been, like, less tolerant of, you know, more gameplay styles. That's why you have this abomination of a game in terms of, like, gameplay styles what is Reiko? i don't even know has the best projectile that you know to some extent has the best command grab i don't know what peacemaker is i'm literally watching mk javier right now peacemaker striker i guess scorpion i don't know what i'm watching like what is this he's just like throwing grenades and like psycho crushing in it's like what what is this <laughs> i don't even know what i'm watching again but that's because they're so scared I don't know whether it's because their prior incompetence or maybe just their refusal to try to make this stuff work. And to to an extent, that's the only way to make the game have more depth because how can you how can a how can a game have depth if every character plays the same? It's like, yeah, grenades, here's my offense. It's so freaking annoying, and I'm so sick and tired of talking about this. But I think that is definitely one of the game's biggest problems. And also, apparently, internally for them because they just refuse to make anything else work other than Rushdown. Uh, again, but it's even about Rushdown. Like, there should be a min, min command grab kicker. There should be a trap, strong trap kicker. There should be a strong zoning character. Uh, I, but I just don't see it, man. Chip in, please. Well, for those who use the talking point, and there are many that will say this, well, they don't care. They just care about the sales, and the game is, you know. Well, if they didn't care, why then put 170k extra in? Clearly, the main reason of putting in an extra almost $200,000 into the pot is because they want to boost attendance, which, spoiler, didn't happen and will not happen. Uh, The more confusing thing is that that also did nothing more than, I mean, like if you're going to put money in, because you want attendance to, to, you know, okay, well, if the people weren't showing up to the tournament because there was not enough money on the line, we'll put more money on the line. But wouldn't you want to make sure that if you're going to put more money on the line that people do show up for these tournaments? So you would think they would change something about the game uh, so that people would want to travel for it and play for it m- more, especially since your, 
your online is abysmal. But the weird thing is, when you when you if they don't care about it, why would they put almost another two hundred? Uh, why would they put up an additional hundred seventy k? Uh, and then knowing that, hey, if we put up more money, because it's it's oftentimes brought up that there's a little disclaimer in the pro series saying that this is not really funded by Warner Brothers. So apparently this is a whole NRS venture for the pro series. And if you're going to put that kind of more money into it and nobody shows up extra in the future, you're really shooting yourself in the foot because if you're a Warner Brothers exec, you got to look at this and say, well, there is no difference if you put 30000 on the line or 200000 on the line. Nothing changes. So yeah. why, why would we put any more money in? So for NRS to do that and then not change something about the game to also ensure attendance goes up, I, I mean, it's a series of blunders upon blunders. And uh, so for anyone who says they don't care, well, they cared enough to put another 170 k up for a final combat let me let me say this uh and I, I want you guys to comment i'm not gonna put in people words of people's mouth uh pick of the hot he's talked to him i know time you talked to him the other day for two hours i talked to him for like an hour the other day mm -hmm. he he's a former rival dear friend I, I i have nothing but respect for him um and if he wants to articulate his opinion he's 100 percent welcome to be on the show and he can talk for as long as he would like um but i think when he makes a statement that um you know the traveling you know the, not the traveling but sorry the competitive players you know a super small audience and do they really matter that much he's correct however the people who are your i don't know your youtube subscribers or twitch subscribers and the people who you know, maybe there's a new DLC, they pick up the game again and they want to learn, so they watch a video, et cetera, et cetera. Those people are not the 0.0001%. That's that's just simply not true, right? That's a far bigger audience. Is it super big? No. But I think those people matter, right? Uh, again, I'm t referring to the people who, again, new DLC coming out, they subscribe to somebody, they watch your Twitch, they, you know, like even if they watch like two, two times a week for like half an hour, right? It's still an audience. And I think that audience matters. It does matter, but at the same time, he's right that it doesn't matter because here's, I think the number, it's not about who's right. It's whose point holds more weight in being right. Meaning that there's multiple things that are true here. The tournament scene online, not very good. Tournament scene offline, not very good. And the player count on Steam, PS5, and Xbox, down. Down, 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 and they continue to go down. However, to Pig's point, Warner Brothers and NetherRealm are still making money hand over fist. This game is still selling very well. So Ooh. you can make a million videos, you can hate, you can be negative, you can do all of that stuff. None of that matters. None of that will change anything as long as the status quo stays the same. No company is going to say, we're making money hand over fist by doing less. We should do more. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Warner Brothers apparently, we all know about their the mergers and their financial situation. They're just not willing to put up the cash to do things, to really make the, uh, uh, you know better net code, to fix some of the issues, to implement some of the, uh, the things into the game like practice mode, or even get cross-play and King of the Hill working quickly, or if not if at all. So... There are there they are very limited in those aspects, but at the same time, the game is. I just have to ask myself, like if the I, I really do believe this game came out eighteen months too early, and if it's hey, it's a matter of a small studio. So Pig is not wrong about that. It's, as long until the bottom line changes, nobody there cares. And another realm, they may be putting, uh, you know, their own money into it, you know, 200K to try to, you know, boost the tournament scene. But nobody above them cares. They, whatever, they only care about what is the bottom line. As long as the bottom line is good and everyone there gets their bonuses, they don't care. So to Pig's point there, no matter what the online numbers are, the tournament numbers are, the bottom line numbers are all people at Warner Brothers look at. 
end of story, period. And that is 100% correct. So from that logic, nobody matters as long as that number is hit, which it is. However, I do question, as far as like the hating on the game, I do question how a game could come out this unpolished. I get the netcode stuff, Warner Brothers, they don't want to put up the cash for XYZ. I got it. I got some of the things that are not implemented into the game. Warrior Shrine, online practice, crossplay, you know, King of the Hill. I got it. But for the gameplay itself to be so far behind where it needs to be, I understand if you want to say a small studio, building the game from scratch, from the ground up, if you know your studio is that small, and you really can't produce a finished product uh, within the time period allotted by your publisher, then you should probably stop your formula of scrapping everything from the ground up. That is a nether realm decision. And unfortunately, it does fall back on them because they have the final say on that, not Warner Brothers. So everyone has some blame in this, but NRS was, is not without it. And you're not so much being negative as much as you did not get a complete product. And there are people who have said, give it six months. The game came out six months too early. Well, now the game has been out for six months. And now, well, it's probably a year too early. That sounds good and all, but you sold people a finished product and then want them to wait a year to a year and a half for you to actually finish it. That's unacceptable. And I, that's kind of like where my state. So everything is all true here. Nobody is really wrong. As far as what trumps what, Warner Brothers trumps all. They don't give a shit about anything else as long as the bottom line is there. They're in the business to make money and as long as business is good, they don't care. However, for the consumer, we did pay for this. And obviously we know the game is not, oh, it came out six months too early. It probably came out a year or more too early. But you charged everyone for this. Period. End of the story. You don't... You, how does the game come out 12 to 18 months too early? That is, that is unheard of today, except for Netherrealm. I think it happens when, when arguably the game was made to, was designed to pay out of a debt, apparently. Again, I don't know the business. And I don't think they even know. I think the game has gone too many directions. Apparently, data miners say that there's a function yeah. in tag mode somewhere in there. Right. So I think maybe the game's... I, I don't believe this. It was So let me just put this to bed. It was supposed to be in Justice 3. It wasn't. And then last second, no. But I do feel like that there was many directions this game went. There is a functioning tag mode, whether they thought it was going to start out tag or maybe they wanted to put a tag mode in. That's probably not going to happen. We know it's in the it's in the it's in the files. But I mean, I, I think I don't know that. Like I said, I don't know if it was supposed to start as tag or they were going to put a tag mode in as DLC. But, well, there's something Pig is 100 percent right about. And it's the fact that there's no question. You know, we may disagree about the details and I, I agree with you. I don't care who's right or who's wrong. But there's no question that um, that this game was released early. Uh, 100%. But I just wonder how, again, it just seems and, like and, it and, also changed and, directions and, multiple times. They just didn't have enough time yes, to really decide Cap how they wanted it to play. But what Pig also says, Capcom and Namco, they're, they are their own bosses, right? Which is 100% true. NRS are not their own bosses. They're essentially contractors, right? So if you, you know... I don't, I, I look again, I don't want to hear that. To me, that point is not valid to me because they are their own bosses and they are it's bigger, the gameplay, and yeah. they are bigger yeah. gaming studios, correct? Yeah. Of Even those studios know that they cannot scrap a game to zero and rebuild it from the ground up in every aspect in the time window they need no, to. No, I agree with you. That's so the million for another realm, that, that is, that is nothing but arrogance. You thought you were going to come up with the best thing since sliced bread. You did not. And then you couldn't get your new ideas rolling for the second game in a row. So, yeah, I will blame Warner Brothers for you. Look, you're short staffed. You don't have good netcode engineers. Maybe something on the artist front. You're not able to implement certain things into the game, practice all that stuff. Sure, I'll put all that on Warner Brothers. But the gameplay aspect of the game being this far behind, that is all on you.
you. You have a small studio. If you knew you could not get the product you needed to have out finished within a launch window or at least six months after launch, your formula needs to change, period. That goes on NRS. That is 100% on NRS. And anyone that wants to apologize for them, come on here and do it so you can make a fool of yourself. Um, I do want to say, um, but they are working on, they are trying to get things going. They are trying to work on the game and they are working many long hours. I don't know whose decision it was to undertake this type of project, knowing you only have a window. I, but I, 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 it's hard for me to feel sympathy for it because they're all profiting off of it, right? I mean, we're the ones suffering. Regardless of how hard NRS is working, they all, look, Ed Boon gets bonuses and things like that for how they, how they whatever, right? Uh, how game sells and because one of others get bonuses. At the end of the day, well, sure. they're still making a hefty profit off of this. So... And that was one of Pig's points. The game is still selling just fine. They're making tons of money off of it. But you sold people a product that was a year to a year and a half early, and you don't even have the manpower to finish it. At what point did you not think starting everything from scratch was a bad idea? That has to go on them. That has to go on them. And the problem is they will never say it was a bad idea. From now on, we're going to whatever. No, instead they blame everybody else and say, oh, it's the negativity. No, it was your bad decision that put the game in this spot. We understand you're handcuffed in certain areas by Warner Brothers, but that is not where you are handcuffed. Like, there's plenty of blame to go around here. I just don't understand the apologizing for, like, oh, it just does, it doesn't make any sense to me. But what Ed, mean, chat wants to know what Ed Boone would say if he saw me. Uh, I don't think Ed Boone, says he's gonna regret. Ed Boone and I don't speak the same language. Ed, Ed Boone, what, what does Ed Boone call frame data or text? Makeup? Frames, that... text. Yeah. Ed Boone is a programmer who doesn't understand how fighting games work. At the end of the day, that's that's what it is. He doesn't understand fighting I, games. I, 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 Ed Boone has always been arguably maybe the best marketer as far as you know fighting was like a sort of all time because if you look at tom i hope i don't speak out of my ass because you would know better than i would sure but originally there was you know the way that mk was sold it, it was all initially on its goal right i'm gonna pretend oh you know like tekken tekken one came out you know was, there was a scene for it you know like of course not that's ridiculous right but the gore sold the game and and if you look at like the mid to late 90s well less so late 90s but it was you know like you played maybe mk2 well obviously it was earlier but and it's like oh my god there's this cool ninja that showed up is he playable can he be used what's his fatality etc cetera, etc cetera, right but all that nowadays is completely you know, I, relevant I, I hate hearing that gore sold the game because why because that's not entirely true gore got their got the eyes on the game and once the eyes were on the game it's everything else that kept mk going over the years not necessarily the gore um for those who don't know how mk even became big mortal kombat became big thanks to senator lieberman basically long story short there was a guy his his dad did not i mean his son wanted him to buy mortal kombat he looked into it himself, found out everything about the game, and was appalled. But there was no way for him to actually know without doing deep research into it what kind of game this is. He happened to work for Senator Lieberman and Mortal Kombat. And that started the Lieberman, the Senate hearings on video game violence. And Mortal Kombat was one of the games that was at the center of it. So, of course... Kids are hearing about Mortal Kombat that go to the arcade because Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 is already out and the fatalities and all this. That got the eyes on the game. But there are many, many, many developers who tried to create a game 
with just as much gore that did not sell. And if True. just the gore was it, then any gore would do. What separated MK gore from other people's gore? MK ripped a head off differently? No, you rip a head off, you rip a head off. It was everything about Mortal Kombat, not just the gore, it was the characters. It was how they play, the specials, the how the game was over the top, the story. Everything that goes along with Mortal Kombat sold it. Anyone that says the gore sold it, they didn't live through it, brother. Believe me, I did. The gore got the eyes on the game, but after that, the gore did not sell it, period. And it still does not. People still say the gore sells Mortal Kombat. Again, and you could play a shooting game right now in which you'll blow someone's brains out in 4K. People are desensitized to that. And yet people still think the gore is selling the game. If the gore sells the game, you go online, people don't even do fatalities. They don't want to do them. The gore does not sell the game. The gore hasn't sell the game in almost 20 years. I mean, I, I, just, I mean, people are just, they just don't get it. No, I think I think now that you put it in those terms, I think it does make sense. Uh, but to kind of maybe slightly deviate, if I may, um, just in case there are any people who may disagree with what we've been saying, um, to me, ultimately, and again, like Tom said, if you want to come on the podcast, then... I don't want to say if you have a name to yourself or dollar. It's not about that. You know, you, you're you friends of us. You know, you want to talk about and you want to challenge our view because we do want to bring in different perspectives because certain people don't. Certain people even left the podcast. They don't even want to talk to us anymore, which I guess it's fine. I mean, right? but Pig is right, though, in a lot of ways. Yes, things are negative. 100%. Things are overly negative. But here, well, Let me make this point that I want you two guys to respond. To me, fighting games, not even the characters, the players, are about playing a certain type of gameplay style, right? The most successful, the most famous, the most pre prestigious fighting game of all time is Daigo. What do you associate Daigo with? You associate with Ryu? You associate with like a footsie style? You associate with a fireball? Sure. That, by definition, guys, is archetypes. When you think of Tom Brady, I'll search Tom Brady right now. One of the first things that comes up in the queue is Tom Brady Ice Code and Tom Brady Sub-Zero. There's a reason for that. When you search my name to much, much lesser extent, you get Zoning and you get Freddy. If you search King Jr., you may get like Bane, etc. So names are literally associated with certain gameplay styles with certain characters. And the fact that NRS has been running for the hills for God knows how long at this point, maybe for like the past six, seven, eight years, is an absolute disgrace. Uh, because the stories back in the day used to write themselves based on how people play, and they still do, right, with Daigo, right? He That's why he uses Ken, et cetera, et cetera. The fact that NRS is still remains scared because of a few minor fuck-ups in the past, balance reasons, et cetera, they gotta they have to fix this and like tom said this has nothing to do with wb because there's no executive who's like you know what we want to make sure this is a rush down game they don't know anything about fighting games right they just they're just they're no just but at the same they, time hmm. on the negativity if you're in another realm you have to kind of like and even you know anyone that, that questions the negativity because yeah pig is right there's a lot of negativity every channel is is, is negative right now in the game for the most part but that's because in games like MK9 and MKX, people didn't harp on the negativity, even though there was plenty of bugs and issues. But that's because there was so much to talk about on the game. So you might mention a bug or a couple of flaws on the game, but you didn't harp on it and you moved on and you kept things positive and, and talked about the game matchups, things you could do, etc. This game doesn't have anything like that. Most of the matchups are one size fits all. Um, there's very few intricacies to the game for the most part. And the tech is really not much, if at all, anymore. So if you are a content creator and you only cover Mortal Kombat, what are you supposed to do? You can't put out tech videos. You can't put out guide videos. You can't put up matchup videos. You can put a guide video up once every month, one day a month. <laughs> For one, the character, the next month, the cameo. So you can do a guide video 
one day, one every 30 days. Uh, other than that, what are you going to report on? Well, you report on what you can to keep MK News on your channel going. DC issues, how long did that take, right? Uh, you, uh, the moving further around, how long did that take? The constant nerfing, the, the tournament numbers, Evo, MK is second to last, etc. While these things are all negative, these things are also true. And NRS has put the, the content creators in a position where you didn't give them anything to make tech on or guides on or matchups on. So instead they have to report something. You got ketchup and mustard talking about the best and worst versions of shit in MK history again. That means you have nothing to fucking talk about in the current game. That's where everyone stole Rio's idea in MK11 when MK11 was done. And every, where Rio, when there was nothing to talk about, he had the ingenious idea of going best or worst version in NRS history just for content, using his knowledge and experience in the community and what he's gone through and played through. Well, every other content creator was like, oh, this is a genius idea. We can make content when there's nothing to talk about. Well, you still see that today because there's nothing to talk about. And you can go on many, many people's channels, you know, whether it's Underdog or Uncaged Games or wherever else you're going to go, and they're going to talk about things that have nothing to do with MK1, but this or NRS history, that or NRS history. And because they, there's nothing to report about but the negative stuff and or the first day of a new character and first day of a new cameo. Other than that, there's 0.0 MK1 news unless it's bad. So if you're someone that's only reporting on MK1 and MK1 stuff, there's nothing good to talk about. And whose fault is that? Netherrealm. Give people something good to break down, more meat on the bone in the game, and you will quickly <laughs> notice a lot of that negativity will cease because they have so much more to cover. But when you give them nothing else to talk about, their choices are move on to a different genre, move on to a different fighting game, or start talking about the best and worst version of dumb shit in NRS history. But they have to <laughs> abandon MK1 altogether. It just, it, yeah. A lot of that goes let, let on me, NRS. Yeah, let me say this. Uh, I think and I, I, Franco, I, think let, I mean, let Franco in on this because... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, like if, you were, if you were a, con Frank, if you were a content creator... There's not much tech-wise in this game. Like you and your brother, especially, are players who have been known to break down matchups. But there's not that much of that in this game compared to like a game like X and Nine. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. Like um, when MK11 was the newest game, like me and him were dicking around on fucking Injustice One and like MKX, MK9. Like you know, uh, we didn't enjoy MK11 and I as con creators i don't even know what we really talk about like i had like maybe month one and two i had like tech videos for garris who i thought was one of the more complex characters but like outside those like i think there was five six garris videos i made at an mk11 i had nothing else man there's no there's no more juice like uh excuse the voice crack but yeah there's no more juice left to really explore Wait, did Garris, you say you like, and your brother went to Injustice 2? Dude, yeah, we literally played everything but MK11. Like, we played Injustice 1 and MK9 the most. It's an interesting point. Dave, you referenced this to me, that during Jenna Cage's release, you were saying that Ninja Killer and Combat played maybe a few minutes of Jenna Cage, then they turned off MK1 and went there to MK11. There was a post in Test Your Might, I, you know... I don't think the person was making stuff up, but they're apparently like, you know, like people are... He's, he was like, yeah, saying he's currently watching this happening, the day of Janet Cage. Yeah, so there was a poll in Test Your Mind saying like, you know, I'm excited about Johnny, you know, Amanda, Johnny, Janet Cage. Like, I just wanted to see what the tech is. And they turned in to their favorite streamers, a couple of them, and they were playing, I forget which game, it might have been MK11. Justice 2 or might have, MK11, it might have been Tekken, so... But guys, this is unheard of. Like, I can't even recall the last time. So you look at like Mayman, Sui, Frame, a Whisper, some of those top tech and, uh, content creators. They don't talk about what's uh, the most broken previously in a tech game. They do that when it's like the fifth or sixth year, or, 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 or you know, or, or, of of a tech game. 
<laughs> this is literally like this is almost unbelievable. So you have a, like a new DLC, new content, and people like are talking about like what was the most broken. I don't know, MK9 or MK or whatever have you. This is honestly to me, it makes me laugh because this is unheard of in, in like in the Tekken community. Talking about like if they want to be, you know, like you know, call call so called negatives. Uh, if they want to be positive, they, they talk about tier lists. They talk about. Um, but you can do that. You can talk about tier lists, and there's so yeah. much to talk about in Tekken that yeah. the, the reason why the plugging and the cheating does not yeah, let, get let me as just, much me, attention yeah. as like an NRS game. Let me, let me just say, let me just say, yeah. they talk about difficulty tier lists. They, they talk about like, what's a tier list if you're not, you know, you're not me. None of us are. If you're like, I don't know, intermediate rank, what's the tier list? So there's so much to talk about. What is Ling? What is the stupid character? Like, why does she do well, this? How do I find her? You can do a tier list in any game. That's not technical. I, 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 I know, I know. But like, it, tier list based on different, like, skill levels. Based on different, like, characters, right? You don't see this in MK. You just don't, right? That's the difference. And, you know, you could talk about, like, you know, Yoshi has 200 moves. What is this character? How do I fight him? How do I use him? There's no such thing in, in MK. Like, that's the difference. Instead, you know, what do people talk about? What's the most broken thing in MK9? We already know. We've seen a million. Well, Tom, you and I have. <laughs> but maybe other people have not. But we, because we've been through yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean, to your so, point, in those these other games, it isn't just about tier list or generic stuff. There's so much to talk about in the in the game and how the characters play, etc. That a lot of these issues, while they do get attention. They're not harped on as much because you can make videos for so many other things, not just that. In MK, that's just kind of it. The game has been farmed out in its first couple of weeks, and there's been nothing to really talk about. I, 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 I agree 100%. Again, I, go, I, I think it goes back to the lack of depth. And look, I'm trying to be positive. Um about this game and it, and it's it's been rough because i think the biggest criticism of this podcast you guys need to be more positive i'm trying to be i just don't think there's there's much to talk about um again the tournament numbers are all the way down offline and online and i i understand it, it's it's almost hilarious like literally a dlc just came out and we barely even talked about her uh i think that's kind of described the state of the game i don't think it's on us i think it's the state of the game and I think they need to do a much better job of, um, again, this is all in the NRS's hands. I don't think it's WB. Stop overhauling your fucking game. Try to have a consistency. Um, try to have archetypes. Try to have more depth. And people will talk fondly of your game. Maybe let's end on that. Let me know what you guys think. Yeah, at the end you of fight. the day, people want to make content for the game. The problem is that's the only content to make. See, there are people out there who, and to pig, Pig's point, there are those people who are, yeah, I do believe that there are some that are just farming the negative content for views. Not all, but some. However, some what of these the people do this for, um, for, for, um, for, hold on, but some of these um, people do this for a um, living. Okay. Hold on. So they're not doing it intentionally. There's just nothing else to talk about. So they're like, I, I cover Mortal Kombat and there's nothing else about the game to talk about. Like a new patch comes out, like the last patch that Striker, Nerf Johnny Cage, whatever. Where are they going to talk positive about it? Where? No matter what they say, no matter what they say, they're going to be crucified for it. If they say, hell yeah, they finally came for Johnny. I can't wait for them to come for Kenshi and Raiden. They're going to be crucified as being negative, even if they agree with those changes. And if they say, I don't agree, they're watering the game down even further. You're being negative about the game. You're being a hater. They're in a box where there's nothing they can say that's good. And that's just because the state of the community, they're so angry and so disappointed that... It's just not a good situation right now. And I think, for let Frank close it out, I think the fact that there is an audience to listen to the negativity, and there's definitely like a pre and post honeymoon phase for every fighting game. There's no question about that. But it seems like MKs usually fucking last longer than the other ones. <laughs> you know, like 
Uh, and the fact that people are willing to listen is maybe more so of an indication, not necessarily on the community, but more on the, you know, on, on, on the undertaking of the developers. Franco, you have the last word. Can you guys hear me? Yep. All right, cool, cool. I, was, uh, I plugged in my charger. I didn't know if I was going to mess with anything, but... Um, I mean... Yeah, it's very strange to see a lot of people, like, already bored with, like, like after the honeymoon phase, after, like, a month or two, like, we're six months going in seven months. And, yeah, I know it's, it really sucks to see uh, Janet may have not have captured everybody's attention like we were hoping for. And a lot of people are theorizing that maybe Ermax patch will be the one that has uh, loads of changes for the game, but... Um, yeah, it is, uh, kind of, uh, unfortunate to see the games in the state right now and everybody's like mostly talking about what's perceived as negative, but I think a lot of it has a lot of truth behind it. Yeah. And at this point, I, I know people are saying you guys always talk about Mortal Kombat. I think the way to leave Mortal Kombat and really, I don't plan on coming back to it until something changes, if it ever does. I mean, I guess I'll still cover patches and they'll probably all go the wrong direction. But at the end of the day, I think you just have to realize the game came out a year and a half too early and they don't have the manpower to do any to to ever complete the game. So unfortunately, this game will eternally be in beta state. I know that's going to get everyone angry because they charged you for a full product and then put a cash shop in the game. So it's very, it's just bad business to with beta. You just, you really abused your audience's good faith. You released a beta, charged full price, and then put a cash shop in it. Uh, people are just gonna be angry about that. So for everyone, anyone that says the game is too negative, et cetera, anytime someone releases an incomplete product, and then puts a cash app in it and never completes it behind. Well, you know, we were, you know, we were short staffed. Uh, so we only got half of it done, but you didn't sell it for half of the price. Then there's the, you have to, you can think that people are being too negative, but at the end of the day, you have to agree with that point as well. There are a lot of things that are true simultaneously here. So to me, I only plan on covering the patches. Hopefully we get a good one. If not, there's really not much else to say about the game. I well, guess the negativity note. will stop, but at the end of the day, then all the talk about the game will stop. So it's not. <laughs> so yeah. Well, let me and let me on the on this note. Something I am positive about is Tom's um, YouTube um, comments. Every time he releases a video, you guys are massively active. Uh, so even though you know we talk about how well. If you're old school play, like a lot of the forums are dead, right? Test your mind is nowhere near as good as it used to be in terms of like traffic. But Tom makes a video and I don't know, 30, 40 minutes in, there's like 500 comments. I, <laughs> I think that's awesome. So uh, even though I, I assume on Tom's behalf, I really appreciate the feedback. And speaking of the feedback, boys, uh, boys and girls, gentlemen and ladies, please leave us some feedback and let us know what you think. I do read it. I go back, hopefully... Uh, Tom and uh, King do the same just to see what people think you know maybe I need to read something I need to reevaluate my uh, you know view of certain things um, but with that said we appreciate you guys to, for listening to the new era podcast let us know what you think we do read your feedback and until then we shall see you next time yeah we did some Tekken this time and more than likely it'll be almost all Tekken next time and and Unless NRS is NRS again. Thanks for watching, everyone.